context free cement humans, which describe that. <clears throat> the problem is what happens in novel situations when you don't have such a knowledge unit. And <clears throat> one important point of the model is that he explicitly says you don't need such a control structure such as the SAS. So you can't say, well, yeah, then the SAS takes over and creates an MKU for the new situation. It doesn't work in that model because there is no such thing as an SAS. So he wrote explicitly, uh, referring to the SAS, in my view, the supervisory attention system is just a set of frequently used MKUs which are context-free and help guide us through underspecified situations. So he would say, okay, it's just a very abstract MKU. We have learned how to deal with novel situations. And he says, even thinking is described by such an MKU. And this is um, an example for um, such a thinking MKU. How can we represent it in a very abstract way? So <coughs> you start this unit, you orient towards your problem context, you recognize the items, what is available for information. You recognize the problem you have to solve to deal with. You seek a solution. I mean, this is this is an old point. Seek solution. Probably it branches down. How do you seek a solution? You think of related problems, things like that. You attempt a solution with an outcome, either failure, then you go back and start, or a success, then you have the outcome, you assess it, and you leave the so he says, okay, um, even you don't need such an unspecified uh, mystical controller like the SAS, you just, with that, you can describe virtually every behavior. It's still, in a way, unspecified, but um, he makes quite a bit of effort in explaining how they are developed, for instance, during childhood, and relates that to the development of children, what they are capable of, at what age, and so at what level of abstractness are they in developing their MKU just through experience and things. So they don't come into existence out of nowhere, they're not inherited or something, but they are learned by experience in childhood and created. The homunculus problem, that means who is in control of everything, um, he would say it's just a set of high-level MKUs, and they are just developed during child development. And this is just an illustration, but he thinks it is like neural networks which are modeled things, and there are different exact topographies and model types conceivable, which are um, possible to explain this model, but basically it's hierarchical interconnected, you have activations, inhibitions going on, and such a network can be self-organized, so that when you have some very basic principles, that such units um, come into being or into existence by themselves, just arise as a feature of lower level units. So he has not a perfect account, but at least account which deals with some problems uh, of the SAS. Okay, I think, yeah, we are then at an end for today. And next week, we would then start with uh, looking at whether executive functions are a unitary function or whether there is evidence that it's separate sub functions. So, do you have any questions regarding um, that? Yes, are these mainly cognitive models, or do they have some kind of brain-based research associated with them? Um, so these are primarily cognitive models. The SAS model, Norman Schellers, um, has been investigated quite a bit in patients, because Tim Schellers is a neuropsychologist, so he works quite a bit with patients, yeah. and so we, they relate that to their experience with that. <coughs> And of course, it has been used in other research as well. As I said, it's quite popular. The Grafman model, there are links to that as well, but it's not 
that much that people use it now every day and say, okay, it's like this, yeah. see Grafman or something like that. It's, a, it's an attempt to explain things, it's still present, but it's not um, primary model. In their papers, they don't go much beyond the idea of, yeah, it's in the prefrontal cortex. And, okay. um, but where exactly, and in which gyrus or sulcus, and whether there are distinctions and so forth, they usually don't mm -hmm. go into that level of detail. Yeah. So still quite a bit of work to be done here, yeah. to be more specific. <clears throat> yeah, maybe some, because we still have some, some time left, some concluding remarks. The prefrontal cortex is a very, very tricky business to investigate. Um, so I presented it as being involved in executive control. However, that has been questioned as well. For instance, um, there are MRI studies, uh, and again, it's by this Mark Disposito, which we have seen before. Um, I said, okay, if it's if it is really the case, so let's do a simple task and see whether the prefrontal cortex is activated. And he boiled down the task to a simple response task. You lie in the MRI scanner every time an X appears on the screen, you press a single button. No choice response times. Only from time to time an X appears, you press a button. Lateral prefrontal cortex is activated in that type of task. So that is somewhat a problem. So either we need a better description of the task and say even that type of task depends on executive control or we need a revised view on the lateral prefrontal cortex, what is really the function. And personally, I believe that um, science at the present moment, I think they don't have found the proper language the prefrontal cortex speaks. We use all our paradigms we know from cognitive psychology, yes. throw it at the prefrontal cortex, see when is it activated, when it's not activated, or more activated than less, and try to um, try to make inferences then about its functionality. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's not the right task. Maybe you have to think completely different how about the function. Another problem is that fMRI studies or the activation given by fMRI studies yeah. do not tell you whether this area is really necessary for the task. Mm -hmm. It may be just a co-activation due to strategy, due to something else, but not a necessary, necessary one. Like in this example, a simple task. Because remove the prefrontal cortex and people still can do the task. Yeah. And that's the reason why to make a really founded inference about that a particular brain area is associated with a particular function. You always need both. You need MRI or PET, and you need the patient study. So this is not just redundant. Oh, they are showing with that as well. It's complementary information. Because if MRI shows you this area is involved in the intact brain. So it is involved in normal task performance but you don't know whether it's essentially required for the task. So when you work with the patient, and this particular lesion uh, results in that the task cannot be performed, you know it's an essential basis. Mm -hmm. However, if you would have only the patient data, you don't know. Maybe that area is not important at all. Maybe through the white matter they run a few bundles connecting two areas which are important. Yeah. They can't communicate anymore, so task performance is low. But the area itself, the gray matter, the calculations done there are not important at all. That's the reason why you always need you both for, for proper appearances. Okay, any other questions? Um, I'd say is is most of the research in executive functions um, based on cognitive tests and cognitive theories or is there, is there much of a field in um, research in executive functions outside of that? What do you mean outside, like clinical or...? Um... And, you know, in terms of exploring things like uh, choices in creativity or um, social uh, social sort of dynamics more to do with the, the frontal lobe rather um. than sort of the more um, mechanical type tasks. I would 
would say um, that um, executive functions are more in this mechanical type okay. of task because it is about the mechanics of our cognitive system. Yeah. They describe that and they deal with um, how we organize this type of behavior, like social behavior. In speaking of you know, neuroanatomy, seems to be um, controlled by different brain areas, okay. more frontal median areas mm -hmm. between both hemispheres, or not lateral. And um, you have links, of course, then to executive functions. Yeah. But um, usually, executive functions really, you have basically the big domain of behavioral research, uh, looking mostly to the spam task coming from the background of memory research. Mm -hmm. Then you have um, the area of neuropsychology, the dis-executive syndrome. That's a big research area because you just have these patients showing these yeah. syndromes. But again, you use these mechanical tests to assess the key features of the syndrome. Yeah. If there are no further questions, uh, before we leave, uh, I mentioned that at the beginning, that everybody was here at them. Um, I switch off the camera. Mm -hmm. uh, I said, this is my first lecture here at Bruvel and in the UK. <laughs>